What is the basis of any digital signage? Of course, this is the hardware which it is based on. And these are not only digital displays, but also media players, controllers, smart devices, mounts, and etc. Everything that makes digital signs such a useful and effective tool nowadays. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel and welcome to Look Academy, where we teach you skills that are somehow useful in working with digital signage completely free and without any final exams. And today we are starting our new course, which will be entirely dedicated to digital signage hardware. Our course will fully cover this topic and help you find out how to choose the right hardware for your digital signage projects. See if you're a business owner or technical specialist who's faced with the task of implementing this technology, our course is created just for you. It consists of three episodes which will be released on a weekly basis. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell so that you don't miss the next ones. Thank you. Well, let's get started. Today's video is dedicated to the alpha and omega of any digital sign. Of course, I'm talking about digital displays. We run through the types of displays currently widely used in the industry, take a look under the hood from a technology perspective and highlight their differences and advantages. Let's start with undoubtedly the most popular type on the market. I mean the flat panel displays. This is like a common name for modern smart TVs and digital panels with sizes from 10 to 100 inches, which in fact differ from each other only in the technology used to create the display matrix. At the moment, there are four main types of such panels. LCD and LED LCD displays operate using a layer of liquid crystals and a backlight based on cold cathodes or more energy efficient and durable light emitting diodes, respectively. Their advantages are good brightness and low price. The disadvantages include low contrast ratio and long response time. In turn, OLEDs work on the basis of organic LEDs, which are self-eliminating, and this makes it possible to adjust the brightness of each pixel separately. The obvious advantages of this type are high contrast ratio and fast response time. The disadvantages include relatively low brightness and pixel burnout in static pictures. When used as a digital sign, this drawback is quite unpleasant. A problem can be prevented by regularly changing content and using a large number of dynamic videos. Well, and the latest type I'd like to highlight is the QLED, which essentially take the best from previous options. In this case, an additional layer consisting of quantum dots that emit light is placed between the LCD matrix and LED backlight. This technology provides the highest brightness and clarity. However, the price for such displays is also the highest. Regardless of type, Flat panel displays are widely used in retail, hospitality, advertising, QSR, healthcare, education, and etc. Among the market leaders, I would mention Samsung, LG, Philips, and Sony. It is worth noting that along with consumer models, these manufacturers offer commercial grade displays. Among the obvious advantages of these screens, I would highlight enhanced brightness from 500 nits, 24 per 7 operating mode, increased lifespan up to around 50,000 hours, the ability to place the display in portrait orientation, advanced capabilities for managing display settings and extended warranty. Among other consumer grade display manufacturers, I would mention TCL, Xiaomi, Hisense and Panasonic. The most common operating systems that these panels run on are Android, including Android TV and Google TV, Tizen, WebOS and Roku. Well, let's move on. The next in line is the second most popular type of displays, which is widely used today in outdoor advertising and facade installations. Of course, I'm talking about LED screens. These displays consist of dozens of modules, which in turn are dotted with hundreds and thousands of LEDs that glow when an electric current passes. Among the main advantages of LED screens are outstanding brightness of up to 10,000 nits, low power consumption, and long lifespan. In addition, modular assembly provides incredible opportunities for creating displays of various sizes, shapes, and purposes. From small board with exchange rates to incredible multimeter 3D billboards. 
There are outdoor and indoor LED screens. Outdoor options are weatherproof, thanks to which they are able to work in extreme weather conditions, including temperatures from minus 30 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. They also have anti-vandal protection. Another important parameter for LED screens is the pixel pitch. This is the distance between the centers of the colored dots. The closer to the viewer the content is broadcast, the smaller the pixel pitch should be. For example, for indoor screens that people look at from a distance of three to six meters, a pixel pitch of two to four millimeter is recommended. In case of outdoor screens, which as a rule are located at a distance of 10 or more meters from the viewer, the pixel pitch can reach 10 millimeters. It is worth noting that to control the LED screen, you will need a video processor and an external hardware media player. We'll talk in more detail about these devices next week in the second episode of our course. Among the market leaders, it is worth highlighting Layered, Unilumin, Christie, Nanolumens, Epson and Barco. Now let's talk about other types of displays that are based on the same technologies but along with it have specific functionality or form factor which allows them to be distinguished as a separate type. And we start with video walls. These are large displays of various shapes consisting of several flat panels combined to create a single image. There are standard setups like this one or this one. But there are also quite unusual asymmetrical installations, the main task of which is to create a wow fact. A video wall can be assembled from ordinary TVs combined using a special controller, but a large bezel of 12 to 20 millimeters in such installations looks unprofessional and doesn't allow the image to look like a single one. This effect can be achieved using special video wall panels with a reduced bezel down to an imperceptible 0.44 millimeter. Seamless installations like these look truly impressive. In addition, you can control content on such video walls with one external media player, no controller is required, since such displays support daisy chain technology. You can watch this video to obtain more details on it. Video walls are most often used as digital signage in shopping malls, hotel and business center lobbies, bank branches, retail stores and the event industry. Next on the list are interactive displays. Nowadays, they are widely used as self-service points in fast food restaurants, banks and government facilities or as information panels in retail and hospitality. This solution is based on a flat panel with a touch screen which allows the user to independently interact with the content, receiving information or performing some targeted action. There are several types of touchscreens on the market now, but the most popular and capacitive ones. Among the leaders of this rapidly growing market, it is worth noting Samsung LG ELO Touch solutions, NEC, ViewSonic and Sharp. Let's move on. The next stop is one of the most common form factors from interactive displays. I mean floor standing digital kiosks. They often perform the functionality of self-ordering terminal, an interactive catalog or a navigation panel. However, kiosks without touch screens are also widely common. As a rule, they are used as advertising surfaces at public transport stops or on walking streets. It is also worth mentioning that there are outdoor and indoor kiosks. Outdoor options have IP66 weatherproof protection and IK10 anti-vandal rating with tempered anti-reflective glass and increased brightness from 3000 nits. Among the manufacturers of such displays, Dynascan and PLS AV stand out. Now let's move on to transparent displays which have become one of the most sensational innovations in recent years. These impressive displays provide incredible opportunities for facade and storefront solutions, retail merchandising and event marketing. From a technology perspective, they are divided into LED and OLED based options and in fact differ from their opaque counterparts only in that 
Their design uses transparent substrates, due to which light passes unhindered through the matrix, leaving the image as if floating in the air. Now, now let's talk about the last type of display in today's selection. In terms of technology, this type is radically different from all that we described earlier. Essentially, it's not a digital display at all, but it can make a display out of almost any surface be it a regular wall, a 13th century Catholic rule, or a river bridge. With this tool, you're actually limited only by your imagination. Well, okay, and a couple of permits from the city hall, of course, I mean projectors. Today's high quality projectors can create incredible digital installations that leave an unforgettable impression. This type of display is most in demand in immersive museum projects and as part of city events. However, it also has wide applications as commercial advertising displays. Among the market leaders, here we can list Epson, Barco, BenQ, Canon and Optoma. Well, that's probably all I have for today. The video turned out to be long, but I think it was worth it. So congratulations to everyone who watched it to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next week in the second episode, which will focus on digital signage players controllers, processors, and smart devices. It will be really interesting, trust me. In the meantime, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Gabriel was with you, see you later.